Hi there, welcome back to my studio. This is Judy Crow, and I am going to paint the poinsettias that you see in the um, screen in screen, the screen share of my uh, video, and hopefully you can see that. I am just going to paint the, the tops of the poinsettias on this um, linen canvas. Right here, this is a linen canvas made by Source Tech Company. I'll just let you see that very quickly. Uh, this is a Clausen's 166, which is a type of canvas that is acrylic primed. I like the acrylic prime canvases really a little better than oil primed because they have a little more tooth and um, are a little more absorbent than the oil primed canvases. So here's my palette. Let me tell you the colors I'm using. And while I'm doing that, I may put some more out. Got a little bit of a mess here. I should have corrected before I started this video. Sorry about that. This, my white is a titanium white made by M. Graham. I really like it because it is, the binder is walnut oil. And my yellows are Cad Yellow Lemon made by Rembrandt, Cad Yellow Light made by Rembrandt, uh, Transparent Orange made by Gamblin, Cad Red Light made by Rembrandt, Cad, or permanent red medium, excuse me, made by Rembrandt, Windsor Newton permanent rose, Gamblin alizarin crimson permanent, and ultramarine blue. Those are the colors I'm using. Not a real large palette. I like to make my greens. Okay, I'm going to get started. Sketch in my Just a, a real simple shapes sketch. Um, thinking about my composition here, I want to go off the canvas with these poinsettias and just I'm not going to paint much of anything, just the poinsettias. We'll see how this turns out. Could be a complicated subject matter. So I like to do this before I get started putting any actual paint on because it helps me map out my composition, kind of figure out where I'm going to go with it. And I like to sketch with this gray because. I can just, if I don't like it, I can just wipe it off, which I do often. Now, I'm not going to draw all of those little petals, every single one on there. I'm going to get what's most important to me. And you, if you did this, you may see something else that you felt was more important to get on there. And that's, that's fine. It's your painting. So... I'm going to come down with that one petal that, I mean, uh, actually, did you know that poinsettias, these were all actually um, leaves from the poinsettia plant. Put one down here, and then I will put a couple of the leaves in there as well, and stems. I have, I've never done this type of uh, 
poinsettia painting before, so who knows how it's going to turn out. We'll see. <clears throat> Next, what I think I'm going to do is start a little bit differently in that I want to further map out where I'm going with this. So I'm going to use some of my alizarin, maybe a little permanent rose. Those are very transparent colors. So when I'm painting flowers, I like to start with transparency. A lot of times, which would mean I would need to stay away from these two reds because they're very opaque. Mostly. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing this to map out, as I said, my where I wanna put those flowers. Beautiful color, love that color. All painting brushes are typically long handled. The reason for that is that so that you can take advantage of those long handles and hold your brush back. You should always hold your brush back like this. I find myself inching up on it, which I really shouldn't do. But uh, I, I like to hold my brush back. It just helps you see what you're doing a little bit better. I don't want to get right up on my canvas. I don't want to get right up on my color palette because if I do, I, it, it's like being too close to your work. You can't really see what you're doing. It's better to step back and take a look an objective look from a, a distance. So like I said, this gets really complicated and that is why I want to start this way. Try to keep this as simple as possible. This poinsettia is actually closer to me. Um, than this one or this one. So it's overlapping the one back here. So I want to try to achieve that in my sketch and I consider this still part of my sketch. I'm going to use of these as well. Usually the center of flowers, it's a little darker. These petals fold in and so they're escaping the light somewhat, which makes them a little darker. So I'm going to do that. And I see if I look at my subject, I see that's true. The beauty in painting flowers is that um, If you get the drawing off just a little bit, I mean, who's gonna know? 
of course, you have to get the drawing somewhat right to say whether or not it's a rose or a um, daisy or whatever. A little more mineral spirits to thin this down. And coming off the edge over there with the petal. I'm going to keep this as dark as I can for as long as I can. Okay, I think there's a petal under here. And there's a tiny one down here. I'm going to carry this red down just a little. All right. A little bit of red goes a long way. So before I get carried away too much further, I'm going to put in a background, just a real simple off-white or gray background. So how do I make my gray? I'm going to make a violet. Add just a touch of warmth to that to gray it down. It's not quite dark enough. It's starting to make a little bit darker gray. Warm it up. That's a little dark. I'm going to use a little mineral spirits just to touch so that I can scrub this on and I should have put a brace on that pa palette on the paint. Let me do that. Kind of a weird setup with the camera and everything. Let me move my camera back. There. Okay. Now let me scrub in that background. Whoops. I need to do that. I got it a little too thin. I'm using a light gray background because those flowers are so dark. And I want my painting to be about the flowers. So I don't have a lot of background showing for that reason. And there are some nice negative shapes in here. 
And what do I what do I mean by negative shapes? It it is those small shapes in between the flowers. There's one here. Really important. They can help define whatever it is you're painting. Warm that up a little more. Warm it up again. And I want to bring that on down. Here. I don't know, this could be a wiper. I have to do that a lot. Maybe not, we'll see. I'll leave some of that open down there for some green leaves. Let me put those in. Hopefully you can see how easy it is or how quickly you can capture a subject. I'm gonna mix some uh, Cad Lemon and Cad Light with Ultramarine Blue. Bring it up in value just a touch with my white. Well, that's a nice color, but it's too light. So start over. I'll thin that out it's a little better and Actually, I don't like that, and I'll tell you why. I wish I had stuck with more transparent color. So how do you do that? Let me show you. I'm going to take that off. Move some of my puddles over. Here, I'm going to save that paint to maybe use later. I just want to make a clean on. My palette's bigger, but if I move over too much, you won't be able to see it. So. as clean as I can. At the end of the day, most of the time I go through and use some rubbing alcohol to really clean that mixing area off. So now I'm gonna go back to ultramarine blue, which is a fairly transparent color. You can probably see that. Then I'm going to go to my transparent orange and make a transparent green. I like to, as I said, I like to stick with transparent colors when I'm <clears throat> scrubbing in the shapes. 
of flowers. Yeah, just a touch of that yellow in there. Okay, also, I have some green stems coming up in here. Let's finish up with some of this background color. And then you put that in fairly thickly. Try not to disturb too much what I've already done. I have to make some more of that. It's always good to have a good pile of gray on your palette, too much alizarin because it's so useful. A little more blue back into that. You can really carve out the shapes of your petals and Um, leaves this way. Okay. Okay, my canvas is covered. Move my, move my camera back into place. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to work on my flowers and also work on those uh, leaves. Okay, I'm going to go in with some thicker paint. And now I can use some of my opaque tones to lay on top of these dark transparent colors. Now that's not light enough. We have a color called Scarlet that I like to use a lot in occasions like this. I need to get a little more paint out. Should have done that before I started the video. Sorry. Okay, I'm almost out of this CAD red. I mean, this permanent red medium. Permanent red medium made by Rembrandt. And here's my scarlet. And when I'm painting flowers, red flowers, I do like to use a little of this. You can get the same effect by mixing 
uh, some of your these reds together with these, but to save time, I'm gonna cheat and use the scarlet. This is my Cad Light, which I'm almost out of. Okay. Paper towels. Now, let's see what a different scarlet will make. Ah, like that. Now I can see I'm gonna have to go back in and put some dark, dark shapes back in. Well, let's do that as well. Let's use some permanent rose, some scarlet, and some alizarin to darken it. Oh, blue too will darken it a lot. Squinting down, squinting down for those darks. And my abstract, simple shapes. One reason I like that scarlet is because you can keep the intensity of that red and still lighten up your tones a little bit. And all I'm doing is trying to hit some light shapes, squinting down to see where my lights are. I'm too picky with this. This isn't going to be. It's going to be more of an impressionist impression of poinsettias instead of. I don't do photorealism. To me, photorealism isn't quite as exciting. I admire people that do it, but if that's what they like, I'm just trying to bring some of those reds up in value without losing the intensity. If you add too much white, 
you come up with a pink. And I don't want pink. I want red. Awesome. Some of those edges. Boy, that red is really intense in the in the video, and it's not as intense in my painting. But hopefully you will still get an idea of Okay, I'm going to soften this. It's dark. I'm going to lay on top of this a lighter. Put it right here. And come around behind it and carve out that shape. Um, I'd like to really show you how, if I can adjust the camera a little bit, let me look. Oops. Okay, it looks like that's that's all I'm going to be able to do. So, hmm. My painting is so much more pink than this shows. I hope you'll learn something from this anyway, and I will uh, put the photo of the painting in the, the in, end result, <clears throat> however far I get. In the thumbnail on the YouTube video.
putting back in my darts when I where I can. Painting is hard. It's fun, but it's hard. Okay. I'm gonna go over to this guy, squint down and put in some light, light abstract shapes over that shapes over there. In the camera, this looks so orange, and it's it's has really has more red and pink in it. I'd like to be able to use my camera, except My husband suggested I buy a smaller instead of the D, uh, DSL camera, and I may end up doing that. Carving out those petals, bring them into the centers. Looking for the dark shapes behind them. Carefully trying to put those in. Trying to match the shape and the color of the darks and lights that I see. That's my task and yours as a painter. The tip of this flower is a lot, is a little lighter than I have it. Now I'm going to go back behind these flowers again, uh, I need to use a clean brush because this one has so much red in it. I like that brush. It's a silver brush, ruby satin. And I love those brushes, but I'm gonna, oops, 
and look what I did. Went right into the red. Do not want to do that. I'm going to stay away from the red, so time to make a clean spot on my palette again. And just put that there. important to keep your palette and your brushes as clean as possible. I have a paper towel in my hand all the time, pretty well, yeah, all the time when I'm painting. Because if I take a brush stroke, that means I have to nine times out of 10, wipe my brush off. Put some more white out. Make another gray, bit of gray with my blue. Little loserin. Some white. That's really blue. So add a little more get in it to make a violet. and then want to make my gray. This takes practice, but you can do it. If your gray is too red, you've got too much red in it. If it's too warm, you've got too much yellow in it. If it's too blue, you have too much blue in it and you need to add back some of those other colors to get the true gray. Okay, that's a real neutral gray. I'm gonna put a little teeny bit more warmth in it like I did to this one up here. Okay. More white to it. How much are these shapes? Very carefully. Wipe my brush. Wipe my brush. Pick up more paint. Wipe my brush each time. Now, my painting is not exactly like those poinsettias. There's a lot more petals in there for one thing, but I'm okay with that. I'm gonna take this one out, this petal, because I don't think it needs it. And a little warm. 
get that back in there. That red is pretty hard to cover up. We're trying to cover too much space. Want my brush. Wow, I can't believe the color difference in my on my monitor and versus what I really have. This is bleeding through, so I'm going to try to take most of that off and try again. Soften that uh, tip. Okay. Now what to do? Clean up these leaves. Okay, this is too much one color. I'm gonna just put in a little and soften while I'm doing it, some permanent rose in there. Okay, that's not perfect, but I'm going to go ahead and move on. And <clears throat> let's go back with some lighter leaves now. My squint. There's a leaf behind there. A lighter.
going to put in another leaf right here. Petal, rather. I am stepping back from this now and just glancing up there, trying to figure out what this needs. Certainly not perfect, but it's okay. Pulling some of those uh, flowers together a little. And back and forth, back and forth, dark to light. Okay. I really want to put in some very light accents in these. flowers here tone the intensity of the yellow down with a little white slanting see some look, touches of yellow here and there And some pretty greens in here. Okay, this is not the best painting I've ever done, but hey, it's not the worst for certain.
We'll pop a couple of dark accents back into this guy. I think I lost it in the center. Well, I might do some touch up of this later, some cleaning up of some edges and shapes. It's helpful to set up a painting for a couple of days and then, then you can come back and say, okay, I need to take this out or do whatever. It's uh, it's good to look at it with a fresh fresh eye. So that's what I will do. But overall, it was very uh, enjoyable painting these. I'm looking at my subject to see if there's anything I can put in that would help at all. But I'm semi okay with it. Like I said, I may put uh, some other shapes in later, but for right now, I think I'm done. Thank you for watching this, whoever you are and wherever you are. And I hope it helps you in your own painting skills.